Hey, my name is Vin Jiang. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a communication skills expert. And on top of this, I'm also part magician. Yes, I know, I'm a bit of a mixed breed. And in this particular video, I want to share with you five ways in which you can improve your voice as a professional. Let's get into the video now. As professionals, it's very easy for us to focus on our visual image. This is how we dress and our body language. You know, we want to look the part, don't we? And we all know that people make very quick judgments about who we are as a person within seconds of meeting us. Now, visual image, this only makes up 50% of the first impression puzzle. The other 50% of the puzzle is made up of what is known as your vocal image. This is the image that other people create in their minds the moment you open your mouth and you speak. People are already starting to make assumptions and forming beliefs about who you are as a person as they collect information on your vocal and visual image. They're thinking, how successful are you? They're making assumptions on how confident you are, how friendly you are, how trustworthy you are. Human beings are exceptional at making very quick judgments, whether they're true or not. How many times have you been to a networking function and you look across the room and you, you see someone that looks really friendly and then the moment you start talking to them, the following happens. Oh God, he saw me, damn it. Oh, I've got to have to talk to him now. Oh, he's so arrogant, he doesn't even know it. He just, it's so, oh God, get out of this conversation. Must create reason. Oh, let's pretend my phone's ringing and meant to get, my phone. Oh God, don't have my phone with me. Oh no, I'm stuck in this. I hate the way he talks. I hate his face so much. No! Ah, don't deny it. I bet you've experienced this before. Now look, I'm not here in this video to talk about body language. We'll talk about that in another video. In this particular video, we're going to focus on vocal image. Before we dive into this, I just want to say that you're already great at using your voice. You are, trust me. When you're with your best friends and you're sharing something that you're very excited about, trust me, you're already using your voice in an extremely dynamic way. The problem isn't in those very moments. It's when you use or fall back to your default voice or your professional voice. You know, a quick little experiment you can do is you can ask children to play an adult or ask them to pretend to be an adult for a moment and watch what happens. When you ask kids to do this, they become all of a sudden very serious and then they lose all expression on their face and then they start to speak in a very monotonous way, in a very serious way. It's hilarious. Anytime you ask a kid to play an adult, that's what happens. And that's what I mean. Because often when we go to work and we present ourselves in a professional way, dress a professional way, all of a sudden it channels this archetype where we have very little expression and very little vocal dynamics. And as a result, we become less engaging, less influential and less impactful. Here are five ways to help you improve your professional voice. Number one. Ugh. Whoa, what was that weird imaginary situation that I created that was enhanced by editing? What was that? Number one. Understand how powerful your voice can be. Your voice is much more than just an instrument that is used to project words from your mouth into the ears of others. Look, I'll, I'll prove it to you. You're my listener right now and I'm going to say the same words but just say them in different ways and you're going to experience them differently. Check this out. Wow, this is a great career path. Amazed at that person's career path. Wow, that's a great career path. Sarcastic, slightly jealous, and I also hate that person's face. Wow, that's a, that's a, that's a great career path. I hate my life and I hate my job. I've made some terrible decisions along the way. Hey, yeah, why you know the doctor, huh? Your mother's disappointment at your career choices that you've made story of my life. Can you see how powerful your voice can be though? I said the same thing multiple times, but you received it in many different ways. There was a huge range of emotions that was living underneath the words. There's a world of meaning that extends beyond the words. Of course, 
The words we use are very important, but how we use our voice is equally as important. I could use all of the correct words, but if I said it in the wrong way, is it still effective? No. Your listeners have mirror neurons in their brains, which allows them to share the emotions that you're experiencing, as long as you're good enough at causing them to feel it. This is why we get scared when we watch horror movies and why we cry during Lion King, especially when Mufasa dies. That scene is way too sad for children. It's way too sad, damn it. Long live the king. To be more clear, we can use our voice to help others feel what we want them to feel. That way we can use our voice to create more understanding, more clarity and more connection. Doesn't learning this excite you? There's so much potential that lives underneath your voice that you have not unlocked yet. Next, moving on to... Move, moving on to number... Number two. You nearly got me, Craig. You nearly got me, but did you see those ninja... Okay. Yep, didn't, didn't see that one coming. Didn't, didn't think you'd do the two twice. That, that's very clever, Craig. I, I, I don't know why I hired you. Number two, develop your vocal taste and style. Expose yourself to more vocal styles. Watch a bunch of different TED Talks. Search TED Talks on YouTube and then sort them by views. Watch the top 20 TED Talks. And as you become more aware of how powerful the voice can be, start paying attention to those around you, plus start paying more attention to the TED Talks that you watch. Who uses their voice well, in a way that grabs your attention and draws you in? And whose voice annoys you? Whose voice do you not like? And as you become more aware and develop your sense of style, ask a further question. If you like something about somebody's voice, ask yourself, why do I like that person's voice? What qualities in that person's voice do I like? And if you find somebody's voice to be annoying, what qualities about that person's voice do I find annoying? Start developing more clarity on what vocal image you like, what vocal image you want to have. Just like we gradually develop a fashion sense by watching those around us, start listening for what you like in other people. Start developing your vocal style. Moving, moving on to number three. Moving on to number three. Look in the vocal mirror. Build more awareness on what your vocal image is saying about you. And the best way to do this is to record a video of yourself and listen to it back and watch it back. And as you're listening to it, as you're looking at it, start taking notes on the things that you like about your vocal image and on the limitations of your vocal image. What about your vocal image is maybe saying the wrong things about you? You can't get to where you want to go if you don't know where you currently are. Build self-awareness. Tip number four. You have no idea the dangers I put myself through to create this kind of content with an editor like Craig. But tip number four, read children's books. This tip is simple. I get my students to do this all the time in my classes. Children books are written in a way where they use many emotive words, which allow you to play with your voice way more. We tend to inflect way more with children's words. We tend to be more dramatic. This is an extremely pragmatic way to add more vocal variety to your communication. It's a great way to practice. <sighs> Number five. Okay, I'm just gonna have to keep the force filled up while I do this one because I know Craig's gonna try to get me. But number five, practice creating, practice creating videos for your network. Create videos, creating videos is a great way for you to practice. And it's also a great way for you to track your progress. If, if you do one video per month, in 12 months time, you'll have 12 markers. And it allows you to see progress. Far too often when we're improving our communication skills, we can't see the invisible progress that happens. However, if you've got these markers, you can train yourself to see the invisible progress, which will motivate you to continue your communication journey. You see, one of my students that I wanna highlight, his name is Brett Schwartz. In this next video, you're going to see 
you're going to see him when he just, or actually before he started my communication class. And then I'm going to show you how good he is now. He's an inspiration to me. And let's quickly go to the video. As the baseball season progressed, I was not as in tune to my grades as I should be. Anytime my friends would call and wanted to go out, regardless of what day of the week, I would go. We would have fun. Good morning and happy Wednesday. Instead of doing a video super late at night, I'm doing it early in the morning. Things are getting better, improving every day. It has taken me a long time to, to understand that. I'm still struggling, but you gotta be willing. Put yourself out there, ask for help, ask for guidance, and the next thing is apply it. You see, isn't that really inspiring? You, you really gotta check out his stuff now. Create videos for your network. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ensure I leave some potential questions that you can answer in the videos that you create. Film yourself answering those videos and then post them on your favorite social media platform. Make sure you use this hashtag and then tag me in the video as well. I'd love to see it.